But I, I, I believe the singers must have read that scripture that said, I will look to the ears from which cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord. Oh, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. It don't come from your job. It don't come from your good looks, your expensive perfume, but your health comes from the Lord. I want to ask you to turn with us this morning uh, to Psalms 3. Those that are viewing this telecast, we're going to ask you and thank you for tuning in to share and to like. Psalms 3. Three in its entirety. Uh, this is a psalm that was written uh, by David during a time of trouble. And if there's ever time, we ought to be able to relate to that with, with all of the things that are going on. Oh, psalms 3 and verse 1 says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. And, and so David starts out and talking about instead of his enemies being fewer, they're, they're beginning to multiply. Uh, it, it seems like when you're trying to do good, that opposition is always around. But verse 2 says, Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Sometimes the enemy tries to tell you that God has wrote you off. But, but I want to tell you that God is still there. Verse 3 says, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Verse 4 says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy heel. I lay me down and sleep. I awake for the Lord sustain me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that may have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Verse 8 says, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people. Amen. I want to talk to you uh, this morning from the subject and just look at your neighbor and tell them a delayed victory. A delayed victory. Well, some of y'all have been wondering if God has forgot about you. But I'll look at the other neighbor and say, it's just delayed. It's not denied. Not Come on, tell them God hasn't forgot about you. But, but if God didn't allow you to go through what you're going through, uh, then you wouldn't know how weak you were without God's help. And so he hadn't forgot about you. Come on, tell you, baby, he hasn't forgot about you. Oh, 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 God, God told me to tell you that your tears of sorrow, he's getting ready to turn over into tears of joy. That prayer that you prayed, that, 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 that you thought he didn't hear, God said, I heard you when you first prayed. And he said, it's a lady. Victory is not denied. He said, go ahead and lift your hands. Give him a praise in his hands. He said, God has heard you. He said, you belong to him. He said, and he said, if your earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more need does your heavenly father, he says, God, know how to fix you up? Look at your neighbor, Barney, with Sister Durham, and just say, God loves me too. 
I have to say me too because she's already core that brings that God loves her. Uh -huh, but, 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 but just say to yourself, God loves me too. God loves me. Amen. Because if you know he loves you, uh, baby, you'll keep your head off your head. Amen. And remind somebody that I belong to the king. You'll let somebody know that no weapons are formed against me shall be able to prosper. God. That no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Father, we bless you and we thank you as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praise. God, we want to come before you, Lord, this morning as empty pictures, Lord, that need to be healed. Lord, let your spirit and your word uh, overflow our circumstances and our situations. Uh, Lord, let your glory continue to prevail. Uh, we come against every divisive spirit of the enemy. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, you deliver and set free. Uh, God, uh, what you said, Lord, it shall come to pass. Uh, Lord, those that are on the beds uh, of affliction this morning, uh, let them know, God, that you're able, you're able to, my God, raise them up. Uh, you're able, oh God, uh, to turn their situation around. Uh, you're able, oh God, uh, to turn their midnight, uh, amen, uh, in the morning. Uh, you're able, oh God, uh, to take the power uh, and turn Oh, come on, look at your neighbor one more time and tell him God has forgot about you. Oh, hallelujah, sir. Oh, I feel like praising him, sir. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For the joy of the Lord is the master of Hallelujah, 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 To take back everything uh, that the enemy uh, has tried to destroy. Uh, this is the only uh, to take back uh, everything the enemy tried to steal from you. Uh, and look at your neighbor and say, I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my anointing back. Uh, I'm taking my mind and my memory back. Uh, I'm taking my good health back. Uh, I'm taking my relationship with God. in here this morning. Uh, look at your neighbor say, I smell victory. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor say, I smell victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, preacher, what does it say? It smells like God. Well, uh, it smells like uh, what the devil calls uh, and what it meant for that. Uh, 
take out many for good stuff. What do you mean, Christian? He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God, look at your name and say, God is so good. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I, I, I'm trying to get to this message, but that, that as a glory cloud, God, in the place of this glory. And you know what? In the glory cloud, God, hallelujah. Sickness and disease, God, it's got to go. With the glory cloud, God, your healing, God, and your deliverance, God, is in the house, God. God. The songwriter says, God's got it. God. If it's love, God's got it. God. If it's joy, God's got it. God. If it's healing, God's got it. God. Whatever you need, God's God got it. God. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, you may be seated if you can. God. Oh, in the presence of the Lord. God. Oh, it's a good thing, God, uh, when God stops by, God. I don't know about you, uh, amen, but I get excited every time, amen, that the Lord uh, visits us with his grace and his mercy, God. I, I, I'm so glad, uh, amen, that God uh, is on my side, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, a delayed uh, victory. Hallelujah. It's not denied, it's just delayed. Amen. As we examine our text this morning, I want to tell you that this psalm, it intermingles both David's lamenting and his confidence. Amen. And in the sweeping scope. Amen. David was crying on one hand, but he was happy on the other side. Because every now and then, can I preach to the real church this morning? That every now and then the human side of us begins to doubt because we're looking at the circumstances rather than looking at the God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask to think. Uh, so it's okay if you have to shed a few tears uh, this morning. It's okay. Uh, but when you get through shedding your tears, uh, look to the heat uh, from which coming your lips. Uh, every now and then, uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, God will make me act up in here this morning. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have church this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but every now and uh, amen. You have to remind yourself, uh, amen, that if God got me here, uh, amen, if it got me through the inside, uh, guess what? He will get me through that. Uh, amen, amen. But I got to move on here. Lord, have mercy. And, and so here it is, David, uh, he, 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 he cried on one side. Uh, but David said, this crying ain't getting me nothing. God, he said, I know what to do. Uh, uh, I, 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 I got to lift my hands uh, and begin to tell God, uh, thank you. God, hey, man, even though I, I, I don't see it, uh, if I pull back my resume uh, of what he brought me through, uh, I know he's going to bring me out of this thing too. Uh, and, and so we see this intermingling uh, a man of him lamenting, uh, but, but yet his confidence in the sweeping scope that it becomes uh, a man of pattern, uh, a man for praise, uh, that, that if I begin to praise God, uh, guess what? God's going to lift up my head. Uh, if I begin to praise God, uh, God's going to begin to give me peace. Uh, anybody looking for peace? Uh, can I tell you, peace uh, is in your praise. Uh, if you can praise God uh, in the midst of your tragedy, uh, God says, I promise you peace. Uh, amen. Uh, if you can praise God uh, when you just lost your job uh, and they're calling you crazy, 
And they're saying, how can you, uh, amen, praise God after getting the bad news? Uh, well, if you know God, uh, look at your neighbor and say, he's up to something good. Uh, amen. Anybody believe that this morning? Uh, that if God allowed it, uh, God's up to something good. Uh, is working for your good, uh, not for your flesh, uh, but it's working for your good in him. Uh, amen. And, and, and so David, as he, amen, he, he, he says, uh, not only amen, can I praise him, that the praise will give me peace. Uh, he says, but I've got to learn uh, how to pray in the midst of the pressures. Uh, I'm not saying that we're not faced with pressure, uh, uh, pressures every day because we are. The, but in the midst uh, of the pressures and the cares of life, uh, you've got to learn how to give God the praise anyhow. Uh, you've got to learn how to thank him uh, in spite of but uh, amen. And when uh, you can do all of this, uh, David said, This is, uh, amen, uh, my secret. Uh, amen. David shares his theological secret of having this assurance uh, that in the face of adversity, uh, that if I will praise him, uh, if I will pray, then God will give me peace uh, in the midst of the storm. You know, oftentimes people say, well, how can you, uh, amen, be so calm? Uh, well, you can be calm because uh, you know that God allowed you to go through it, uh, that God already got an escape door for you. I anybody know that? Uh, because he said, I'm not going to put any more on you than what you can bear. Uh, but every time we get so confident in our ability, uh, God has to remind us uh, that you're not as strong uh, as you think you are. Uh, because sometimes uh, we've been in the fight so long uh, that, that we think that we're walking on our own strength. Uh, God pulls back. Uh, he meant to let you know that it's not you uh, that's keeping you. Uh, he meant, and, 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 and so David realizes uh, he, he, he says that all of my enemies are caving in on me. And in the back of his mind, he says, there's a whisper that says that God has wrote you off. But, but let me tell you, God said that I will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. Uh, it, so, so when the enemy brings that thought to your mind, uh, you, you need to be a, a man uh, like Jesus told Peter when he revealed who he was. Uh, he said, get thee behind me. Uh, amen. Satan, uh, amen, because Satan doesn't care who he uses. Uh, well, you know, one of the greatest tools uh, that the church needs to have is uh, the ability to be in unity. Uh, amen. It doesn't mean uh, that we agree on everything, uh, but, but we see the bigger picture that is not about us. But it, it, it's about advancing the kingdom of God. Uh, and so I want to start this message out with a story called The Double Fence. Well, church unity uh, it, it, is fine uh, as an idea, but it's another thing entirely when we deal with application. Now, anybody ever been a leader in the church? Uh, People give you all the accolades uh, when you accept the position. Uh -huh. Amen. But uh, as soon as the honeymoon's over the next day, <laughs> you had one moment uh, where they're so glad for you and know you're going to do a fine job. And, and then the next day, uh, here they are giving you all kind of uh, gahina. Mm -hmm. you, you look it up here. In, in, in the Bible there, in your dictionary, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Amen. But, 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 it's, if God put you in the position, he said, those that I call, he says, I also qualify. Yes. Amen. And to get qualified for anything, uh, you, you got to put some work in, right? Yes. How many of you nurses just went and took the test? 
uh, or, or, or did you have to go to school first? And then have to study and make preparations. How, how many got a degree and, and you just walked in and said, I, I want this degree. Uh, you, you, you know, I don't have to take any classes. They, they look at you crazy. You, you had to go through some things. Amen. In order. Amen. To get that degree. Well, that's what God is talking about. Those that he called. He said, I also qualify. The, those that are resisting you. Uh, you know, and sometimes you, you try to fight them with, with flesh and blood. But what you've got to remember, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Yes. Oh, yes. You fight the devil uh, and, and his imps on your knees. You, you fight the devil by pushing back the plate and humbling yourself. But he meant, well, I'm going to show them, well, okay, so now we got two imps working together because now you've lowered yourself down to his level when God is greater than that. Amen. And so when you learn that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, duh. And, and sometimes we say, well, I don't understand why the people, don't worry about the people. Uh, worry about your relationship with God. It matters because if you let God be God in your life, uh, then God will show you beyond measure that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask to see. Now, in uh, this story uh, that, that, that we read, it, it says, Between two farmers near Valley View, Alberta, you, you can find two, uh, par two parallel fences only meet two feet apart, running one half mile. Two farmers, Paul and Oscar, had a disagreement that erupted into a feud. Paul wanted to build the fence and split the cost, but Oscar refused, since he wanted to keep cattle on his land. Paul built the fence anyway. After the fence was completed, Oscar said to Paul, I see we have a fence. What do you mean? <laughs> we, Paul asked. I have the property surveyed and built the fence between two in, 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 into my land. Paul con continued, some of my land is outside the fence. And if I see your cows trespassing, I'm going to shoot them. Oscar knew Paul was serious. <laughs> so when he eventually uh, chose to use his land next to Paul's for pastor, he was forced to build a fence two feet away. Well, unity is practice in time consuming, costly, distracting, and difficult at best to obtain. It, it means sacrificing our preferences and our desires. So why bother? Before Jesus was arrested, he prayed, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me, St. John 17, 22, and 23. Now, unity is practiced and sometimes painful. What are any witnesses in the house? We, we've got it going on even now in Congress. Even uh, the parties within themselves are fighting. Uh, two senators are stopping the major bill. Uh, be, because they say that the numbers are too high. They, and, and these two are stopping the so-called progress. Well, sometimes that's the way it is in the church that there's somebody sitting on the fence trying to stop the progress of God. 
Amen. But 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 now unity in practice is sometimes painful, and it does mean that that we must sometimes give up. Amen. Our preferences, sometimes our taste and our traditions. So why bother? Well, to fulfill our mission to make disciples. Amen. God wants uh, God who who sacrificed His Son to remove our sin. And, uh, and bring us back into covenant relationship with him. So think of the great sacrifice that God said in the book of Isaiah, with my own arm I'm going to bring salvation to mankind. And uh, it, it, it's one God, but in three manifestations. Uh, he is the Father in creation, the, the Son in uh, redemption, uh, and the Holy Ghost in regeneration. Uh, look up today and say, He's a bad God. Uh, he, he takes up the form uh, that He needs uh, a man to minister to you and I. The, I. I said, that's a bad God. The, amen. The, and, and so uh, the, the question is, can you be kind when you put uh, your mind on it? The, because oftentimes, uh, Amen. Like the farmers, amen. We 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 mean uh, and, and we're contrary. Uh, we will only do what we want to do. Uh, but but sometime in the unity, uh, you got to give up what you want. Uh, amen. Uh, now as quiet as is kept, uh, uh, the greatest sacrifice uh, that that is made in terms of the finances uh, uh, of our building. Uh, uh, has been given uh, by the first lady and myself. Uh, quietly done. Uh, amen. That when it ran short, uh, uh, quietly done, uh, went into our, our private uh, money. Amen. Because we believe uh, that when you invest in the kingdom of God, uh, amen, that you can't go wrong. God. Uh, and somebody said, you mean you went into your retirement? Uh, God is my retirement. Uh, and, and what I sow, amen, to advance the kingdom of God, uh, God's going to give it back a hundredfold. Uh, God. Now, I'm not saying be foolish and don't have a retirement. Uh, but what I'm saying is that when God tugs on your heart, uh, amen, uh, and God says give it, uh, you need to respond. Uh, and you know, and you don't have to call in a, a, a news press uh, to say, look at what I've done. Uh, amen. Because when it's from the heart, uh, amen, uh, God said when you gain in secret, uh, he will reward you openly. The, we got your neighbor say, what are we doing? Oh, I got to move on here. The, amen. But I got to move on. But I cannot tell you, together we can build uh, up a church uh, if we can work together. The, you know what our greatest resource is? Uh, is not the money that we give, uh, but our greatest resource, come on, point to yourself. <laughs> it's the people who take time to call the people. It's the people uh, who reach out to our brothers and sisters uh, and say, I'm praying for you. But I, 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 I know you've been home because of COVID, uh, but I want you to know that you are in my prayers and uh, you're in my heart. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know, uh, amen, that I'm praying for you. But for every struggle, for every disappointment, uh, amen, for every letdown, uh, amen, and, uh, I'm praying for your fears. Uh, I'm praying for your phobics uh, because you, you just don't know now, you know, People walking around, uh, amen, no matter, some with a mess, uh, it really don't matter. Uh, but, but, but here you're walking around saying, well, I, 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 I hope I don't get it, uh, amen, but God has not called us uh, to walk in fear, but, uh, but he's called us, uh, amen, to be soldiers in faith. And so when we really uh, understand that 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 God is uh, our, our comforter, Amen. And, and, and like David, many times we feel overwhelmed, uh, we feel angry and frustrated. You say the judge, folks. 
Oh, can I be real today? Yes, the church folks get overwhelmed. Uh, the church folks get frustrated. Uh, the church folks get angry and need to come and sit in on one of my classes on uh, Saturdays. Uh, Amen. But 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 now you you know the church folks are oftentimes full of anxiety and worrying uh, when God has always taken care of us. Think up to the neighbor and say, what are you worrying about? Hasn't God always taken care of you? Hasn't God always made a way? It is not that we necessarily deserve it, but God has always taken care of of us because uh, we belong to him. Uh, oh, I need to remind somebody that God is with us for for he already is your shield. Uh, amen. And he will uh, amen, lift you up in him. Uh, look at your name and say, God is my shield. Uh, amen. And when God lifts you up, uh, there's no enemy uh, a, a man that can take you down. Uh, they may lie on you. They may talk about you. Amen. Amen. But don't get distracted by that. If they talk about Jesus, where does that leave you and I? Oh, you, you got to understand that oftentimes uh, you got to tell yourself that I got to win where I am uh, right now. Uh, amen. I can't wait till I get to the other side. I got to win uh, where I'm at right now. Uh, amen. Because you say, Pastor, I, I'm in a low place. You can win in a low place. Uh, you say, but Pastor, I, I'm in a middle place. Uh, you can win in a middle place. Place. Uh, you say you don't understand I'm in a high place. Uh, you can win and uh, right where you are. Uh, see the enemy got confused uh, because they thought that he's a god of the hills. Uh, they say if we attack the people of God down in the valley, you know, they don't have no history there. But look at your neighbor and say he's a god of the valley. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter where you are, but God is everywhere. Uh, well, the first thing that we find uh, in, in, in our text, uh, in, in, in man, uh, is the Hebrew word uh, mizmor, and it means to pluck strings. Uh, amen. This also is the first prayer in this book. And the first psalm attributed to David. Uh, now, all the books or all the psalms in books, uh, book one is Psalms 1 through 41. They are attributed to David except 1, 10, and 33. Now, uh, Psalms 2 is assigned to him in Acts 4 and 25. Psalms 3 is categorized uh, as a personal lament. And there are many of these collections. Uh, now, the Bible tells us in Psalms 3 that David was called unaware. The, sometimes we get a little comfortable in our walk and think that we got it down, but the Bible says that his son Absalom had, had, had come in uh, and he, he wanted the throne, and so he was willing to kill his dad for power. You know, sometimes people get so power driven and hungry that, that they don't care who they take out. They don't care who they hurt. But the Bible says that when the word got to David, uh, that, that David ran out barefoot. Uh, he, he, man, they said, David, you've got to get out of here. He, he, man, because the place that you call home uh, is no longer safe. Uh, well, sometimes uh, the place that we call home uh, is no longer safe. Uh, but, but, but David got his house together. He, he, man, and the Bible says uh, he, he, man, that David begins uh, his prayer very abrupt and he says Lord like Peter sinking uh, in the sea uh, amen David didn't have time to go through a long uh, liturgy of things uh, the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, Lord I'm an empty picture that needs to be filled uh, Lord I heard that uh, you are a wheel in the middle of a wheel uh, he just began to pray and say God I need you now 
See, David didn't have time to go through all of that, for his life was on the line, uh, amen, and for the state uh, 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 and, and for the future of the kingdom, because David had not yet appointed anybody as his successor. But, but David knew that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Psalm 46 and 1, I, I want somebody to get that, that God is a very present help. He's a right now help in your situation. Amen. Now, now, Absalom had taken a long time to build up his support for taking over the kingdom. Uh, and the number increased day by day. Uh, see, the enemy is always working behind the scenes. Uh, that's why you need to have uh, a relationship ship with God. Uh, it's not good enough just to shake the preacher's hand, and, uh, but you need a born again experience. Uh, amen. And, uh, and you've got to have a daily talk with God. Uh, 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 the psalmist says in Psalm 90, he, he, he said, teach me Lord how to number my days uh, that I may apply wisdom. Uh, in other words, let me use my days wisely. But, you know, I, I don't want to just be here and there, up and down, in and out. But teach me, Lord, uh, to appreciate every day that you wake me up. Uh, I, I don't want to be watching TV 23 of the 24 hours. Uh, I, I don't want to be sleeping to 2 o'clock, uh, amen, because the day is gold. Uh, every day is an opportunity uh, for you to give God glory. Uh, every day is a day to say, Lord, uh, how can I bring you glory? Every day is a day to say, Lord, uh, how can I lead somebody to the rock, uh, the rock Christ Jesus? Uh, how can I let my light shine uh, that it may bring uh, you glory? Glory. But, and so when we understand that it was the British uh, statesman James uh, Calhoun that said uh, a lie can be halfway around the world before the truth has gotten its boots on. Uh, well, there's something uh, in the heart of mankind uh, that enjoys feeding on lies. Uh, see, when you tell the truth, truth moves slow. Because truth exposes who you really are. Amen. And nobody really likes uh, to see themselves in the mirror. Uh -uh. You can see everybody else's faults. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Come on now. Help me, Lord. Uh -huh. but, 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 but you can't see your own. Isn't it amazing? But what I like about God is it's a two-way mirror. Uh, uh, that, 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 that. Why truth takes a while. Uh, see, that's why you've got to uh, understand that when God is blessing you, when God is making you, uh, that, that he's not moving as fast as you think he is uh, because God has a natural progression. Uh, you, you, you know, God, God says that, that it took him uh, six days to create, you know, the heavens and the earth. Uh, but God wasn't in no hell. And sometimes when God is making us and molding us and preparing us, uh, we think that he's not moving fast enough. And, and, and then, you know, we try to uh, step out there in, in, in advance. So a story comes to my mind that, that uh, many people had told me that uh, I had a calling on my life, but God hadn't told me. But, but what, what it was... What was that? I, I just got born again. Uh, I, I mean, the genuine uh, Holy Ghost speaking in tongues uh, as the Spirit of God and, and, and baptized in His name and, and was learning this new way of life because I wasn't born over here, you, you, you know, in this family. I was grafted in by the grace of God. Uh, well, I, I, I was listening to people, uh, and I decided one day I was going to get up in the service, and, and I was going to break out and preach all out of order. And, and I got up, you know, at, at the right time, the choir just got through singing. Uh, and I got up, and I. Nothing came out. You know, you, you, even when you get ready to make a fool of yourself, so sometimes the grace of God 
will help you out. And just close your mouth like you did with, with uh, Zachariah, uh, you know, because he, he said, I, I, I don't see this. I'm old. My wife only said, you're going to be dumb until it happens. Look up today and say, close your mouth. Let God be God. Amen. And so, you know, I was trying to rush God, but but after that, I wasn't in no hurry. The folks said, "You I The Lord had told me nothing. I don't care what you say. He told me nothing. And until you tell me, y'all can say what you want to say. Ah, but one day he talked to me. Yeah. Begin to see the change. You know, when God comes in, there's always a notable change. In, in our daily reading, uh, the four chapters a day, uh, it, it was talking about Saul that, that he had a change of heart. Because he was just a normal man in the kingdom, but, but God chose him because that's what the people wanted. And, and it says that when God chose him, he changed his heart. See, when God calls you to ministry, he changes your heart. You know why? Because that regular heart will be like Peter, I'll cut you up. I'll cuss you out. But when God changed your heart, the stuff you wouldn't take, now you take and you let the Lord fight your battles. There's no need of murmuring and complaining, talking about what the people are not doing. Uh, they belong to God. Amen. The best thing you can do is pray for them. Amen. I give out advice to people all the time. And, and they're just so nice and polite. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time. And they're going to do just the opposite. Well, I, I learned not to take it personal. Right. Because as the scripture said, I have delivered my soul. And it will stand as a witness against you that, that, that the man or the woman of God gave you godly counsel and you rejected it. Like the children of Israel rejected God. They said, we want a king like everybody else. Can I tell you, you can't be like everybody else if you belong to God. You're trying to look, look, look like the world, and, and, and you know, you're doing the Holy Ghost shop on the dance floor. If you drink a little alcohol, and you take three sips, and you knock that. <laughs> to God. God has called you to be different. Yes. Not to fit in, but to be peculiar, not strange. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. No, baby, we, we intelligent folks. We got doctors and lawyers and nurse practitioners and business owners. The kingdom of God. Neurosurgeons. Whatever. Uh, they're in the kingdom of God. We're intelligent people. Yes. But uh, being separated and different makes darkness recognize the light. Come on, that's good. That's good. See, see, you live holy, you don't have to chase folks. They will chase after you because they want the light that's in you. You, you, you so many time to be like the world. Uh, you, you know what? They're confused because you got on the camouflage. Mm -hmm. You're looking blue. You're looking, you're looking brown. They don't know what you believe. And then when somebody else invites them to church, and they've been working with you 20 years on the job, and, and, and then they say, I didn't know you was in church. Wow. You have to take me to church. You have to club with me. Hey! Have mercy. Somebody say, Lord. You have to learn to call yourself a born again Christian and, and, and then you're toasted on faith. Somebody say, Help me, Jesus. Margarita or Bloody Mary or 
whatever those things they got. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, well, you know, I was uh, taking communion. That ain't communion, baby. That's the wrong blood. That's the wrong blood. That's the blood of death. Jesus' blood of death. Produces life and that more abundantly. Oh, I, 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 I got, got carried away, but I, I, I need to tell you that not, not, not only were David's enemies increasing, but first, uh, people said this king is beyond help. See, folks will write you off. Uh huh. Said, so, they ain't gonna make it, and, and folks start leaving the church. But don't you be moved by that because if God is with you, what God did was get the folks out that, that was causing disunity. And, and then you, you, you watch when God erects the building. Look at what we did. But now the God that he said yes, but the heathen said when, 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 when we was Emptying our pocketbooks for the king. Were you when when we were fasting and praying? Where were you when uh, we we had the yard sale and you had Where were you? Uh, and uh, we, we we want to thank God for all of those who participated in uh, the yard sale. They they raised. Uh, a little over a thousand dollars at at uh, the yard. We have approved our uh, project of a new uh, street uh, and a retention fund at a new location, and we're going to have to put in sidewalks. None of that was in the budget, uh, but we're together. There's nothing that we can accomplish. When we put our minds, you know, and we didn't have 200 folks to do that. God told uh, Gideon, too many. And so look at your name and say, don't get caught up in the numbers. Uh -huh. So so here it is, they put them off. But, but, but the word help uh, in, in, in the Hebrew is Yeshah. It is translated saved in verse 7 and salvation in verse 8 and it gives the name Jesus in Matthew 1 and John and Joshua. It is used 136 times in the book of Psalms. Now, now, I'm going to say, why Lord? Why are you letting me go through this? Why? Why me? Think of your name. You think you got a privilege card? You think you got an exempt card? Well, <laughs> why God permitted this dangerous and disgraceful uprise? Well, it was part of David's change of the sin of adultery and murder. See, when you do wrong, God may extend mercy, but he said, you're not. Get away. Uh -huh. So, 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 you, you know, God may not have given what you deserve because when David uh, committed adultery, the law said that him and his were both supposed to be killed, stoned to death. But, 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 but see, it was the limit. It was coming through. And, and so while the enemy thought that he had messed up, don't you know that God's always, he, 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 he man got a backup plan. That, that what the devil meant for is that I, I'm going to turn it out for good. He, he, he man, so God in his grace forgave of his sins. Amen. And and but 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 God in his government allowed David to bitter consequences of his sin. 
he experienced painful family. His son, uh, Bathsheba, bore him the rape of his daughter, Tamar, and the slain of Absalom and Adonai. So he paid a big price. But see, David would not have gotten in trouble if he'd have been where he was supposed to be. But you know what he said? I'm going to stay home today. Like folks say, I'm, I'm not going to the Bible class. I'm not going to Sunday school. I'm not going to church today. And the devil said, I got you. Because idle time is a devil's workshop. And, 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 and so now, but she reminding her own business. Here, here come they. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> see for her. Tell her the king wants to see her. <laughs> well, I don't know if she felt honored if she gave the case. She gave in. And the sin. It, it, it doesn't matter what a person's position is. You don't have to yield to sin. Amen. You should fear the one that can take both the body and the soul. Not the one that Because where you spend eternity is the most important. this because of his room. But, but, but now David came back with his trust in the Lord. David, uh, was, was a, he wasn't a man that was easily and, and, he, and he says without ignoring his problem, he lifted his eyes from the threatening by faith in God. Did you get that part? He he looked past all of the opposition. Sometimes all you got to do is look up and begin to talk to God. You see, David knew he was Israel's king was referred to as a shield because he protected the nation, but David as his shield. David was in disgrace because of his own sins but God was the source of David's glory. Can, can I tell you that David began to anticipate in advance. And so he began to sing the songs of praise that folks couldn't figure out why it so happened. Praise God, but he began to pray and cry out to God. So while it started out, uh, he saw it. he turned it around. Uh, he, he, man, the next morning, his first thought was that he knew that God was he, he, man, that he would attend to him that night. And so he got a good night's sleep. He said, I don't believe God has anointed me. Like this, uh, and so don't allow your circumstances in your situations uh, to grip you. We need to remind you, for in His anger is for just a moment, but His favor is uh, forever. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy. God says that, David, I'm upset with you, but guess what? You belong to me. Confess, confess and, 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 and because you're looking to me now, David, I'm going to rest. 
around and put your name there. That God's going to rescue you out of your situation. Now, amen. And his past victories, amen. But he, he said, God, that you, you saved me. So why would you abandon me now? He had to reflect back on God. You know, you saved me with the bear and the my life, my soul. You saved me through all of that. Surely you're not going to let me go out like this. A resume of all the things that God has done for you. Now, now I can. Stephen said, hold not this charge against them, for they know not what they do. Sometimes people take a charge against them. They're ignorant and they're unlearned. Uh, and then they, they think they know what's going on, uh, but he'll make you say things that you'll later regret. He'll make you do things that you'll later regret because his goal is to keep and destroy. But I'm so glad that Jesus said that I am come that you may have life more abundantly. And so today, if that's you, if you're like David, it looks like you've been delayed. God came and he, he rescued David out of the hands of the son. He wants to rescue you today out of your situation. There's nothing. There's no situation, no circumstances that God can't turn around. All is that you've got to come clean with Him. Acknowledge. Is that you today? I invite you to come as the altar workers are coming. If that's you today, you a super natural transformation.